perfect. Hey everybody, welcome to the fourth episode of Code Crew TV. Uh, so we've got some really cool things lined up for today. Our main lesson is going to be building a band with code. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to uh, learn all about the new vocab with Maddie. Uh, we'll have our spotlight feature with someone near and dear to Code Crew's heart, uh, Jean-Francois Maharo. Uh, we have our tech demo with Martarius and Ladarius, so they're going to uh, show us all about this drone that they have, um, and then we'll have our unplugged activity with Brittany. Um, so we've got lots of cool stuff lined up. Don't forget to visit us on uh, CodeCrew.tv, all right? All of the resources that we're going to use in today's episode are going to be found on CodeCrew.tv. Um, you can either type it into your browser or you can use your phone or other mobile device to scan the QR code uh, to get to our website. Uh, and don't forget to uh, like and follow us on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok. There's a Code Crew challenge on TikTok now. Um, we're we're all over the place. Instagram, all right. So don't forget to uh, to like and follow us on social media. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Maddie so that we can get through today's new vocab. Let's learn some new tech terms for today's lesson. The first word is a loop. A loop is a sequence of instructions that is continually repeated until a condition is met. Next we have the term event, which is an action detected by a software program. An event can be a user action or a system action. Now let's learn about parallelism. It is a type of computation that makes a program faster by performing several computations at the same time. Control is the ability to manage, organize, or run something on a computer. In today's lesson, we will be experimenting with control blocks. We're almost there. A broadcast is a method of transferring a message to multiple recipients simultaneously. Did you know Code Crew TV is being broadcasted all over the city of Memphis. Cool, right? Lastly, we have script. A script is a sequence of instructions that is carried out by the Scratch programming environment. Okay, that was enough vocab for today. Let's go. So it is time for us to start coding. Uh, and as I mentioned before, our goal today is to build a band uh, with Scratch. So we don't have a starter project for this. We don't have any starter code. Um, so we're just gonna go to the main Scratch page and then hit create. So don't forget that you can join our class on Scratch. Uh, if you wanna do that, the link is on uh, our website, which is codecrew.tv. Um, and some of the benefits of joining our class include uh, being able to share your work with everybody else and, uh, and getting to see everybody else's work, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna go to create. And all I really know is that I, uh, I wanna do something with sound, with music, all right? Um, and it's gonna incorporate sprites somehow. So let's start simple. All right, let's start with a sprite. Uh, and I think that Scratch has gotten a lot of attention lately. So let's go 
and let's pick a different sprite okay so uh let's go through here and let's see and i feel like um i feel like this dinosaur right here this uh triceratops really speaks to me uh so we're we're gonna go with that we'll get rid of scratch for now uh, and we'll we'll keep Triceratops, and we're gonna name this sprite Sarah, short for Triceratops. All right, so uh, so we have Sarah on our screen now. Let's take a look at the different costumes that Sarah has. So we have um, we've got this one that we're looking at. There's this this and this so sarah's got some dance moves um which i think is pretty cool so let's see what happens if we just make a sound take place when we click on sarah all right so we're going to go back to that first costume and let's look at our code and let's say um let's say so when we click on sarah that's going to be an event so when this sprite is clicked and we can verify that we're talking about the correct sprite because right here in the corner of our coding section is a, a smaller version of the actual sprite so right now it doesn't matter too much because we only have one sprite but in the future we'll be working with more than one so if you want to double check it'll show up right here Okay, so when this sprite is clicked, we want to make a sound. So let's go to sound. And let's say play pop until done. All right. I always, I always really like to start simple and then build on that simplicity. All right. So, uh, so now when I run this code, what I expect is that I am going to click on Sarah, the Triceratops, and a, a pop sound is going to play. Let's see if that's what happens. So we'll click on Sarah. And that worked. That worked pretty well. All right. Let's see what else we can do with sound. So uh, what other options do I have? So we could record something. We could record something. So if I click this button right here, it looks like it's going to record my voice. So let's try that. Do, do, do. All right, let's just go with it. So now I'll change the name of this recording to do, do, do. All right, so hit enter just to save that name and we see that it got saved over here let's go back to our code and we don't want to play pop now we want to play do 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 so let's try it out hmm so I don't hear anything and I'm not sure why that is so maybe I didn't record it correctly so let's go and let's go to our sounds again and let's get rid of the one that we just created all right we're going to make a brand new one so begin recording by clicking the button below do 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 okay so i think what i did before was i held down the record button rather than just clicking it and then making my sound. So now we can test it here. Okay, that's it. So let's save that. And so now this is what we want to play when we click on Sarah. So let's go ahead and change this to do, do, do. Go to our code, let's test it. So now my hope is that when I click on Sarah, uh, we're going to hear that sound that I just recorded. All right. So uh, kind of a dorky sound, I know. Um, but we just wanted to test it, make sure that it worked. I'm fine with it. 
So let's see. I wonder what would happen. Like, could we put another sprite on the screen and have a different sound play when we click on that other sprite? So let's put Sarah over here. And I forgot that as soon as I click on that to move it, it's going to play my sound. So I'm going to disconnect this just for now. All right, and let's find another sprite. So I'm, I'm gonna add another sprite by going over here to choose sprite. And let's go with a different dinosaur. So let's go with, I don't know, is this a, a, a brontosaurus perhaps? Um, some member of the Diplodocus genus. Um, so, so let's do the same thing with this. So I want to basically do the same thing with this one. So we need to wait for an event to happen. When this sprite is clicked, I want to play a sound. So we already know that we can record a sound. We tested that out. Um, but let's see how we can add another sound from their sound library. All right, let's take a look at that. So if I just click this drop down, it will only give me um, pop as an option and then record as an option. Um, but what we can do is we can go to sounds and we can search their library. All right. So we've got some, uh, we've got all sorts of things in here. So what's cool is that we've got, uh, we have instrument sounds, we have um, beatboxing sounds, we've got percussion sounds. Um, what kind of a sound do you think a brontosaurus would make? Uh, let's find, uh, maybe something wacky. Okay, I think it's gotta be that. It's got to be that. All right, we're adding that one. Um, so some of y'all may be way too young for this, but this sound reminds me of the old Flintstones cartoons. So, um, all right, let's look at our code because we have stored this sound in our sounds area over here. So we'll go to code. And we will say, instead of playing pop, I want to play scrambling feet. All right, so let's see what this does. There we go. I like it. Um, it's just like a goofy sound. So let's, um, let's go back to Sarah. And you know what? We did not give Dinosaur 1 a name. We're going to go with Bronto because I think this is a Brontosaurus or something very similar to a Brontosaurus. Um, okay, so let's go back to Sarah. And uh, let's pick a different sound, all right? So the do to do was just kind of a, you know, we, we might call that a proof of concept, all right? We, we proved that we could do that. Um, but let's see what other sounds we have available to us. So we'll go back to their sound library. Let's see what's in the wacky sounds. All right. So we've got toy honk. I don't even know what that is. And I can't read the rest of this name. So I, I want to add this just to see whistle thump. What is a whistle thump? That's what it says. I don't know. It's beyond me. Let's go back. I'm not sold on whistle thump. Uh, we've got pluck. These are very cartoony. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's go with head shake. Let's go with head shake. Okay, so when this sprite is clicked on, we're going to play head shake. Okay. Uh, so let's pause here. All right, we are going to come back to this. Uh, we will return to our our dinosaur band, um, our, our rockin' dinos. All right, so first we're going to see our community spotlight. Um, and this week we are going to hear from Jean-Francois Maharo, who is the curriculum and instruction manager here at Code Crew. Um, so we're going to get to hear about um, why he chose to, to do what he does 
and uh and how he got into tech and all that cool stuff all right so let's let's listen to what he has to say next Good morning, parents and students. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Koku TV. I, I'd like to extend my gratitude to Ms. Ms. Coxwell for allowing me to drop in the class uh, for a short moment. Uh, my name is Jacques Francois Mahara. I am the Curriculum Instruction Manager for Koku. I have an incredible team of instructors that I manage. Uh, on top of that, I also I am the person who are who is engaged in terms of the curriculum and the things that we try to offer our students. Uh, so try to make sure they're up to date on their skills that we're building in terms of what we teach the students. So the question was asked me before, uh, what got me into the tech space or what made me interested in, in technology? Um, but for me, it started when I was in high school. Um, at the time, we took what was called computer application or keyboarding. Um, so it was more so the hardware and learning how to use Microsoft Word, how to use PowerPoints, and things like that. All those things are very great to know because it's all about uh, knowing, knowing those skills is very important. Um, but when I went to college, uh, I knew that I wanted to do something around computers or just learning the idea of just computational um, thinking and things like that. But I wasn't sure, but that's how I knew that um, there was such a thing called computer engineer. So I majored in computer engineer. When I was at the University of Memphis, that's how I, that's where I received my Bachelor's of Science. Um, and then my growth for my love for technology really continued to exponentially rise when obviously when the when our you know cell phones came out, we started having smartphones and, and laptops got a little bit more uh, in terms of the, the quality and the things that's able to do. We just evolution in technology just took off. So as a professional software engineer, uh, I got the opportunity to work on wonderful projects, uh, projects that, that challenges you every day, because every day you come to work is not the same thing. It's a new problem you have to solve, more things you have to think about. Uh, so for me, that was the time that I was thriving and I was enjoying as a professional um, software developer. Fast forward years later, uh, I come across uh, our current executive director, Mecca Igwekwe, um, at an event for Black Girls Code, and I was a volunteer for a weekend event that we're having. Uh, and he and I made uh, acquaintance. We, 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 we met and we talked a little bit. And he explained to me about uh, how he envisioned for the city of Memphis about bringing an organization that would help our children learn these skills. Uh, right there, I knew there was something uh, about this individual and his, and his motivation and his desire to want to do that, really it was like a seed that was planted in my heart. So um, I would say that two years later, um, he and a other individual, three other, and two other individuals created Cold Crew. Uh, and then I was like, this is it. Uh, I started volunteering and teaching as a volunteer in the after school program, weekends. Uh, and then for me, I realized that being around students is where I enjoy being the most. So I decided one day um, that I'm going to keep, I'm going to quit my job and transition into teaching computer science. Uh, because I realized when I was at work or when I was on a team that there was this uh, disparity of just the diversity, with, whether it was in the room, on the teams. And you walk around Memphis, you hear about all these wonderful stories of our children, but I feel like they're not at the table. They're not in these uh, opportunities to be able to showcase their ability. So that's why I serve the community through Code Group, because I want to make sure that our children understand that they're in the digital age, and this is what's really going to get them at the top. Uh, another question that was asked of me was, uh, why Memphis? Uh, what, what is it that that we want uh, our, our, our residents, our people that live in Memphis to understand what it means to be in the digital space. Um, and I'm speaking specifically to students. Um, so you're probably sitting there, every now and then you may hear about the city of Memphis, about the things that it lacks, or the idea that there's nothing to do here in Memphis. But I would like to challenge you and say, first of all, we need to have pride in our city, right? I think when we, when we put that type of uh, mindset out, sometimes we tend to believe it. So what we're trying to do is change that narrative, right? 
because as a young student, you're possessing special skills that you may not otherwise know yet, right? So when you unlock those talents, those skills, that's how you contribute to this great city, and then we uplift the city. So now, from the outside looking in, people are going to be wondering, okay, what is it that's going on in Memphis? What's so special about Memphis? So I decided, my family and I, my wife and I decided to live here in Memphis because Memphis is a great place to be. Take pride in it. Enjoy being in Memphis. Um, and then and defend it. Don't allow people to say about what Memphis is not doing. Uh, and I think that's why I want to make sure that as a student, uh, it's okay to be challenged, right? So whether you go on to do healthcare, whether you want to be a business owner, whether you want to go into uh, law, or th there's so many fields that you can go to, but why, when you learn computer science, it allows you to know about computational thinking, problem solving. So those skills are transferable no matter what discipline you go to. Although I would say that you should do computer science, but I understand not everybody is in the uh, in the desire want to be a computer scientist or learn anything about uh, do that as a career. But if you do the skills and you learn this in your school while you at you know K through 12, it just builds you your confidence to be able to say, okay, if I'm given a problem, if I'm given a challenge, here are the steps that I'm going to take to be able to resolve those problems. So I encourage you all to just. Uh, Stick around, continue to do well in school, challenge yourself, never settle for less, and as soon as you get out of high school, go on to college, if that's your choice, you go to technical school, and just uh, join the workforce, and let's just make Memphis a better place. Thank you for having me this morning, and I'm going to hand it back over to Ms. Carrie Coxwell. Alright, welcome back. So, uh, previously we were playing around with just some silly sounds um, that we could make our dinosaurs create uh, when we clicked on them. But we're supposed to be making a band, right? So let's play some music now. Uh, so what I did was I found some, uh, some free music from the YouTube audio library that uh, is free for anyone to use. Um, and I downloaded that and I imported it into um, my project here. So now when we go to sounds, we've got uh, the ones that we pulled from the scratch library, but we also have the ones that I just added. So we've got these three brand new ones right here. All right, so let's look at our code. And we're gonna start with Sarah this time. Um, so when this sprite is clicked, we're going to play sound Diggy until done. All right. So this song is called Diggy and we are going to play that. Um, so let's go ahead and play. So when I click on Sarah, there we go. We get our song. So that's great, right? We can probably do the same thing with Bronto. So let's go to Bronto. <clears throat> <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, so let's go to Bronto and let's do something similar. So uh, when Bronto is clicked, so that's an event. So I'm going to say when this sprite is clicked, um, I want to play a certain sound until it's done. So uh, da, 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 da. let's go to our sounds. So... It's kind of interesting how um, the sounds that I imported were only imported for Sarah. When we go to Bronto, they disappear. So now I can show you how I uploaded them or imported them. So I went to Upload Sound. All right, and that took me to my folder where I have all these songs uh, stored. I'm just going to choose one of them and open it up. All right. So now we'll go back to code and we are going to choose the one that I just uploaded, which is called Brooklyn. So let's test this. So now when I click on Bronto, Brooklyn should play. All right. So that works. So now we have 
a uh you know now we have a program that plays two different songs uh depending on the sprite that we click on that's pretty cool right um but i think that we can take it one step further because i think i feel like these dinos they want to move right uh they probably feel restricted um not being allowed to dance this music so let's figure out how to make them dance all right let's go back to sarah and let's say all right, when this sprite is clicked, I want to, um, let's say uh, I want to go to the next costume and then play this sound. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay. So that did work, right? Uh, so Sarah switched to the next costume, but then just kind of stayed there, right? I think we want a little bit more. Uh, we want Sarah to keep changing her costume so that she keeps moving throughout the song. So if I want something to happen over and over and over again, I could just put a whole bunch of the same instructions repeatedly. Um, however, Scratch gives us a tool and most coding environments give us a tool uh in order to repeat things um and it just so happens if we look at control here uh we have a repeat block for when we know exactly how many times we want something to run and then we have a forever block all right and forever will just run forever so uh let's do the forever block let's do the forever block so let's see what happens so I want, I want her costume to change forever. So I'm going to put that in there. And now I am going to, let's see. So I can't, see how it won't let me attach the play sound block underneath the forever? Uh, so I can't, it's telling me I can't put it there. Um, I can put it inside of this forever um, or I can put it up here. Those are my choices. So let's try up here and let's see what happens. So, all right, I'm gonna click on Sarah. Okay, nothing's really happening, right? Nothing's really happening. Uh, so what is going on? Uh, so if we, read this code if we're, we pretend that we're the computer and we read this code uh let's think about what it's telling the computer to do so it's saying when this sprite is clicked play this entire song and then once that entire song is done then we can change our costumes forever okay uh so I think eventually we would get to this point, but we would have to listen to this, this entire song first. And uh, I'm not interested in that. Uh, that's not what I want. I want it to happen while it's playing the song. So let's see what happens and uh, put that play song inside of our forever block. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit uh, or click on Sarah here. Okay. So that was interesting. So Sarah is changing costumes. But what I kind of had in mind was that Sarah would keep changing costumes as the song played uh, because we have this forever block in here. Um, and so if we kind of pretend that we're the computer again, uh, we can say, all right, when this sprite is clicked, I want you to do these two things forever, change your costume, and then play this entire song. All right, only once this entire song is done can we go back and change our costume to something else. So, um, so this isn't really going to do it either, right? Because we want it to look like, you know, Sarah is moving and grooving, and uh, that's not what's happening right now, unfortunately. So um, we have to introduce a new idea here. All right. So we can broadcast things. All right. So we can broadcast messages 
and then respond to those messages. So, uh, so what I can do is, let me find it here. Here's my broadcast. All right, so when this sprite is clicked, I want to broadcast a message. So broadcasting is like triggering a custom event. All right, and we know that an event is something that happens inside of a program, right? A an event can be the user clicked on something. Um, an event can be that, um, you know, the user swiped on the screen. Um, but we can also emit events from inside of our program, all right? And that's what broadcasting does for us. So broadcasting sends out a message to the entire program that we can then listen for, okay? So we are going to broadcast message one when this is clicked, and we are going to change our costume forever. So we know that we only wanna play the song once, right? I think we've established that. So we can put this outside of our forever block because a forever block is something, <laughs> there we go, Sarah is going to town right now. Let's stop, okay. So, uh, so a forever block is something that happens over and over and over again. Um, and we don't want to play the song over and over and over again. We just want to change the costume. So we have broadcast this message. The next thing we have to do is listen for that message to occur. So that's where this block comes into play. So now we can say, all right, when I receive that message, I want to change my costume forever. All right, I wanna to go to the next costume forever. So let's test this, let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so Sarah is definitely moving to the music, um, but I don't think that her moves quite match the beat of the song, right? We, we wanna like, you know, we want to make those match up. So uh, I wonder if there's anything we can do to slow her down. Uh, let's take a look in control here and see what we have available to us. So we know all about repeat. We know all about forever. And now we have this weight. We have this weight. Um, so maybe like we could make Sarah wait a certain amount of time before changing uh, the costume so that it looked like she was dancing rather than just kind of, you know, going to town. So I'm going to put this in here. We're going to say next costume and then wait one second and then go to the next costume and then wait one more second, et cetera, et cetera. So let's test it. All right. We're going to click on Sarah. All right. So I think we're getting closer here. Um, I think this is pretty good. Um, we could probably get it closer to having her change exactly on the beat if we played around with this value a little bit. Um, so I think that this song is around 100 beats per minute. Um, so if we did something like wait 0 0.6 seconds, um, then I believe that she would change on every beat or just about, and we can test that here. So just about, just about, not perfect, uh, not perfect. You know, we could probably like futz around with this number for, um, for a good long while. You know, we could try. So that's pretty good. That's pretty darn good, all right? So, uh, but our friend Bronto isn't doing anything. And I, I feel like Bronto would get into this song too. So let's help Bronto get into this song. So the thing about broadcasting is uh, it doesn't matter what part of the program you broadcast from, any part can receive that broadcast message. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, 
let me delete that. All right, so we have this feature called the backpack. All right, and the backpack is where we can kind of store code for later. So I'm gonna take this whole thing. Um, this is part of our script, which is just a, like a sequence of instructions. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it into my backpack. All right, so you'll see that it doesn't disappear from my workspace up here. It just adds it to my backpack. And what that allows me to do is now I can go to Bronto and now I can pull this out of my backpack. All right, so now, so we can ignore this code for now because we're just worried about um, the code that we pulled out of our backpack. Uh, but now when I click on Sarah, my prediction is that both Sarah and Bronto will dance or change costumes, I guess. So let's test that theory. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Okay. So, uh, so now we have both of our sprites dancing to the beat, right? Um, but we've only added one song. So let's see what happens when we play a different song with Bronto. What's it going to do? So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Bronto. Okay, so it plays the music, right? But it doesn't do anything else. Uh, so Bronto's not moving to the beat. Sarah's not moving to the beat. All right, they look very unexcited. So we probably need to do the same thing uh, with this that we did with Sarah. So we need to broadcast a message. Okay, so let's go back here and we will broadcast a message. So broadcast this. And we want to make a new message because we want to do something slightly different when we play this song. Okay, so if we broadcast message one, when we click on Bronto, then we would end up doing the same exact thing right here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's not going to look super wrong. Um, it's just that they're not going to be dancing on the beat. So let's test it. Okay, so they are dancing. That's cool. Um, but it's not on the beat. So what we want to do is we want to say uh, broadcast a new message. All right, and I'm actually going to call this message Brooklyn because that's the name of the song. So let's... Uh, let's broadcast Brooklyn. Now let's say when I receive Brooklyn, I want to change my costume forever. All right, we're pretty much just doing the same thing that we did before with Sarah. Um, we're going to need another weight block, and uh, this number is going to have to be a little bit different. All right, so let's start with one and let's figure out whether we need to make this number um, bigger or smaller, okay? So when I receive message one, oh, I made a mistake. So we wanna change this to Brooklyn. Um, all right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this code, put it in my backpack because we wanna do the same thing for Sarah. So now we'll pull it out of the backpack. I tested the wrong thing. I want to click on Bronto. All right, let's let's click on Bronto. All right. Well, um, I'm feeling good about what we have here. Let's pause here. All right. Um, when we come back, we will add the finishing touches and I'll show you some interesting stuff um, that we can add to this to make it um, a little special, a little unique. Hello. It's me, Martirius, 
and Ladarius. Hello. And we are here today with a cool piece of tech, which is a drone. With this one being called the Parrot Drone. This drone has its own app on any mobile device you have, a tablet, phone, it's called the Free Flight Mini. You can find it on the App Store on both Android and Apple. Now, let's get into some of the things that comes in this case. Here, the drone itself, which comes in only how many colors, Ladarius? I believe it only comes in one color is what the website says, so... It's not much custom ability on the shell of it, but I can see those blades over there. Those, how many blades do you have over there? Those are some nice colors you chose. We have black, white, and red propellers, which, hmm. now that we've gotten into it, comes with a couple of extras. A couple of extras. Oh. Yes. Those blades got some custom ability to yes, it. Yes, so the blades like actually it. does have custom ability to it. They also come with these guards for the propellers. Just, just so you won't hurt yourself. Because I know I did. I hurt myself with the blades of the propeller when it was flying. So it is kind of dangerous without these. Uh, we also have a charger for four sets of batteries. We have these clips that can go on top of the drone. To where you can put like a note or a piece of paper as it's flying around. Which I think is pretty cool. You can do a lot of fun stuff with that. And what we're going to be talking about today, a pellet shooter that shoots out little green pellets when it's on top of the drone. So, let's get into the actual drone. Which, on this episode, we're not going to fly it. This episode, that's for next episode. This episode, we're going to go over the actual pellet shooter. Yeah, the little pew pew pea shooter. Exactly, the little green green bean shooter. So, you go to the app, the Free Flight Mini app, and it will say turn on drone. So, to do that, you grab one of the batteries, you insert it towards the back of the drone, and you will see lights start to glow. That's indicating that mm. it's getting turned on. And when you do that, the app will now start to look for the drone. It's establishing connection. So now we have to wait for it to connect. Okay. Now it is connected. It's ready to go. Alright. So, in order to install the pellet shooter, you put it at the very top of the drone. There we have it. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. It's pretty cool. It is. It is. It fits right on. It connects. And now, the controller is now changed to where we can shoot pellets right here. So to do that, you click on the green button, it will flip. You click it again, oh. and it will shoot a pellet. That pellet just bounced That's clean. somewhere. We will we, <laughs> we will get that pellet back, of course. Cause they're green, though. They're green, so yes. Yeah, so they, they, they're pretty, easy, they're to pretty easy to find. Exactly. They're little green pellets, so if you're worried about losing the pellets, that's fine. They're green. You can easily find it again. Like, right now, I just found it. <laughs> so, you can shoot another one. I wanted you to see that one that time. That's why I put my hands up. Oh, it looks throat. like it glows in the dark also. It, it might. It might. You know, we don't have enough dark <laughs> to prove that. But yeah. might be able to glow in the dark. We'll try, we'll try it out. We'll try it out and see. Exactly. So you probably can't capture it with the camera though. Probably can't. True. So you can take off the pellet shooter and not use it with the drone if need be. Like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't not stop working if you don't have it. So. That was pretty much the, I guess I would say, 
start off to the drone. The actual fun part, the flying, we'll get to next episode when we're actually outside and ready to show you all the tricks it can do. Like a couple of a couple of tips for when it gets to flying, it it can go up to 6.6 .6 feet in the air. And miles per hour depends on wind. It all depends on wind. Like you can see in the top left corner, it will show you miles per hour, and it all depends on when it's actually off the ground and flying. So it can change speeds. But so I can't fly it in the rain. I can't you fly. You most it in likely the, can't fly it in, in the, the rain. Storm. You most like you most likely can't fly it in the storm. <laughs> well, I wouldn't recommend flying it in the storm anyway, children. That is not a good. That idea. is not a good idea. <laughs> so. I say thank you for tuning in this episode and me and Ladarius can't wait to show you what it can do on the next episode. Yeah, they're real fun. <laughs> so uh all right. See you later. Have a nice day. Peace. All right, so it is time for us to put the finishing touches on our uh, our band here. So I've added two elements um, while y'all were away. So I added a background and I added our friend Pico. Okay, so Pico is going to uh, he's going to play a very important role here. So Pico is going to. Uh, he's going to play an instrument. All right. So we are going to go to our extensions and we're going to pick this music extension. Okay. So that's going to allow us to actually play uh, instruments, not just sounds, not just music, but instruments. So um, with Pico, um, so I kind of want Pico to play the triangle. I'm going to see if that's an option here. And it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, rather than being a click action um, or a click event, because we're already using that to play the songs, um, I'm going to use something else. And I'm going to use a space bar event. All right. So I'm going to say when the space key is pressed, all right, I want Pico. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Let's go back. I want Pico to play yeah this is what I want all right I want Pico to play triangle okay so let's just see what happens let's just see what happens so uh, in order to test this I'm going to uh, just hit the space bar we should hear the triangle and I think that's it. That's that's really all I'm expecting to happen right now. All right, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to, we are going to uh, make Pico able to play along with, um, uh, with the songs that are being played. So so let's click on Sarah. All right. So Pico's getting into it. Pico is playing the triangle. Uh, but it doesn't look like Pico's doing anything, right? So he's got this big old smile. Um, but he's not really moving and grooving with our our dinos here. So, uh, you know what we can do? We can tell Pico to change his costume. All right. So I think we're going to use very similar code to what we did, um, down here. Let's take a look at it. So we're not going to use this exact code, but we can kind of use it as a reference. So I was thinking that every time we hit 
um, the space bar and the, the sound plays, then I want Pico to uh, change to the next costume. So I really just need this next costume block. So let me grab this. And I'm gonna put the rest of this over here. Uh, so let's test it. So uh, I don't need anything else to happen. I just need to hit space and Pico should change his costume, <coughs> pardon me, along with, uh, along with playing the triangle. There we go. Okay. So, uh, so let's put Pico in with one of our songs. Okay. So I think Pico's getting into it now. I really, I really do. So, um, I'm kind of curious to see if there's anything else we can kind of play around with here. So in the sound section, we have the ability to change the pitch effect. And I'm wondering if that will work with this music block. So let's find out, let's find out. Except I don't wanna set it. I actually wanna change it each time because that's how we'll know if it's actually making a difference. So let's find out. Okay, I don't hear any difference. So if the pitch effect were being changed, um, it, the pitch would sound higher and higher and higher um, because we are changing it by a positive number right here. So, um, so it looks like we can't combine these two things. My guess is that, um, that this only works with, um, with the sounds that are built in rather than with uh, the music stuff. But I think, I'm, I think what we have created is pretty great. All right, we've got Bronto, we have Sarah, we have Pico, and they are all jamming together. All right, so a link to this project will be on codecrew.tv. Um, so you can remix it, all right? You can add your own spin to it. You can add your own music. I'll include a link to the YouTube um, audio library so you can pick your own um, free music from there. Uh, or you can make your own music, however you want to do it. All right, but this is our little, our little like build a band project here, um, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, one thing that I would really like to play with is this change pitch effect, uh, but maybe we'll we'll have to find a way to fit that into next time, um, because it didn't it didn't work quite the way that I wanted it to this time. So we will, we will make sure that it works next time. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope you had fun with our friends, Sarah and Bronto and Pico, um, and have fun coding. Hello, everyone. I'm Brittany Smith, and welcome back for another Unplugged Activity. Today's Unplugged Activity is about conditionals. Conditionals are statements that are run under certain conditions or rules. For example, if the weather is nice outside, I will wash my car. If the weather is not nice outside, I will not wash my car. Else, I'll drive around with a dirty car. Today's activity is going to be conditional with cards. So, for this activity, you will need a deck of cards and two different types of food groups. So, let's get started. Okay, in front of me, I have two different food types. I have healthy and unhealthy. For healthy, I have grapes and mandarin oranges. For unhealthy, I have vanilla Oreo cookies and chocolate chip cookies. And I also have my cards. 
These are regular playing cards, so they have numbers on them. I'm going to take them out the box and place them face down on the table. Okay. So, to begin the game, we're going to set some conditions. If I pull an even number, I will eat the healthy snack. If I pull an odd number, I will eat the unhealthy, unhealthy snack. So, let's pull the first card. It's a four. So, if it's an even number, I will eat the healthy snack. Okay. So, now that this done, I'll pull another card. It's an even number again, an eight. So, I will eat a healthy snack again. another card. It's a five, which is an odd number. For the odd numbers, we would eat the unhealthy snack, which would be the cookies. Pull a card again. It's an odd number. It's a three. So, I number again, we eat another unhealthy snack. Now that you get the hang of the game, you can pull as hard many cards as you would like or till you run out of snacks. But as you can see, we set conditionals for this game. So, if the conditions are set, you follow those rules. For example, that we use with the even numbers, we ate the healthy snack. Odd numbers, we ate the unhealthy snack. You can come up with your own rules for this game. But as you can see, this was an example. I hope you guys enjoyed this unplugged activity. As you can see, that learning conditional wasn't as hard as you think. We had a simple game going where the even numbers, we ate healthy snacks. Odd numbers, we ate unhealthy snacks. You can come up with your own strategy for the game that we just created today. I hope you guys enjoyed this unplugged activity. I'm Brittany Smith. Thank you for watching. All right, so that wraps up our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we are so happy to, uh, to have you all watching with us. Uh, so please visit our links. Uh, all of our social media links are on the screen along with our website, which is codecrew.tv. Once again, thank you so much for spending this time with us and we will see you next time.